The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. When you have a health problem, you go to your doctor. If you have a legal problem, you consult a lawyer. Now there's another expert you should include among your professional advisors. He's your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society a trained specialist in the financial security of families. He's a solid citizen, a neighbor of yours, a friendly, helpful man who knows how to help you plan for your family's future security. In about 14 minutes, we want to tell you more about him and how he can help you, as he helped many, many others, enjoy the advantages of membership in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Homicide. Its title, Mama's Boy. Many people have the mistaken idea that professional criminals are usually men or women of superior intellect who have perverted their talents. This is rarely the case. And even those who may be said to have a distorted intelligence all lack one basic human ingredient, common sense. Once a lawbreaker has been found guilty and served a prison sentence, common sense would tell him that there is no future in crime. But the so-called professional criminal sneers at the average man with his ideals of morality and justice and ignoring the evidence of his own life convinces himself he will be smart enough to avoid being caught again. And so the vicious circle of crime and punishment continues. The records of your FBI and all other law enforcement agencies are merely the records of men and women who did not have common sense. Tonight's FBI file opens in front of an all-night roadside diner. A middle-aged man comes out from the small cafe and approaches one of the trucks parked nearby. He tosses away a toothpick and climbs into the cab. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you doing in here? I was hoping you'd give me a lift as far as Jefferson. I'm sorry, fella. The company's got rules against picking up hitchhikers. Well, it's a dark night. Nobody saw me get in. How about a break? Well, I'd like to pound it. You know, they're awful straight. I'd be risking my job. It's better to risk your job than your neck. Huh? It's loaded, mister. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy, will you? Then get moving. Sure, sure. Hello, Mrs. Walters. Why, Peggy. May I come in? Why, of course, dear, of course. How have you been? Fine, just fine. Is Billy home? Yes, he's in the den working on his stamp collection. Still? He's worse than ever about it. The whole house is filled with stamps. Books and books of them. It keeps me busy just dusting them. Well, I don't like to disturb him. Oh, nonsense. He's just ruining his eyes anyway. This way, Peggy. How is your husband? Oh, you know Mike. Yes. Yeah, here we are. Company, Billy. Hmm? Oh. Peggy. Long time no see. How are you, Billy? Fine. Just fine. Well, I'll just leave you two young people together. Oh, oh, don't run off on my account. Oh, I've got a cake in the oven. I better see how it's doing. You uh, haven't changed a bit, Peggy. Neither of you. 
<laughs> including the stamps. Uh, oh, I just got a brand new set from Tunisia. If you'd like to look at them before I stick them in the books. Oh, all a stamp means to me is something you put on a letter. <laughs> but wait till you see these. Billy, there's something I've got to tell you. Huh? Billy, Mike and I are all washed up. Oh? You were right about him. I never should have married him. He's been chasing around, and I... Oh, sorry, Peg. Well, it doesn't really matter. I was fed up anyway. Oh, well, what do you plan to do? Go away for a while. Get a divorce. But I'll need some money. Oh. Now, don't look so worried. I I'm not asking for gifts. I just thought maybe we could do some business together and each turn a profit. You're still in the same line, aren't you? Well, uh, not exactly. Oh, Billy, I read the papers. I know you pretty well, and I can tell which jobs are yours. <laughs> I guess you can at that. What do you have in mind? Can you handle $30,000 worth of furs? From where? Mike hijacked a truck this morning. Hasn't even unloaded it yet. All you have to do is get in and drive it away. And Mike will be out 30000 Oh, You are mad at him, aren't you? What do you think? Well, can't say that I blame you. I'm not exactly fond of him myself. Well, that's why I came to you. I thought you might like to return some of his past favors. Uh-huh. Um, how much do you want? One-third. Ten thousand in cash. And in advance. Advance? Well, I can't very well wait around until after you steal the truck. Mike might get wise. Uh, yeah, but I... I haven't got that kind of dough. Well, couldn't you get it? Oh, I... Don't know. Mom has been taking care of the finances lately. Not sure how much she has put away. Oh, I'd rather you didn't tell her about this deal, Billy. Oh, but I have to, Peg. You know that. I... Never done a job without Mom's okay. It's Peggy, Mike. Where are you? Corner drugstore. How'd it go? Well, I'm not sure. He's got to talk to Mama first. Oh, then we're in. What dame can resist a bunch of furs? Well, I'm supposed to go back to their place in an hour. If she says okay, we can close the deal. Oh, fine. Pick up the dough and give him this address. Tell me get in through a window and back, and nobody will be here after 7 o'clock. What about the furs? Have you moved them? Sure. In an empty store, I rented over in Greendale Street. I left a couple of full crates in the truck in case Junior gets suspicious before he drives off. After all, he ought to get something for his 10000 We're taking an awful chance, Mike. Look, hon, this truck's hot. I've got to get rid of it. This way, I not only get rid of the truck, I get rid of Billy. But something might go wrong. What can go wrong? You won't get ten blocks before the cops pick him up. I'll make sure of that. Oh, by tipping him off as soon as he drives away. You're... You're not going to hide in the warehouse tonight. Will you stop worrying, Peggy? I know what I'm doing. About a half hour later, at the local FBI field office, Supervisor Jed Bryant looks up as Special Agent Jim Taylor enters. You wanted to see me, Mr. Bryant? Oh, yes. Sit down, Jim. Thanks. You've been assigned to these truck hijackings that have been going on lately? That's right, sir. I'm afraid I've got another one to add to the list. Oh? The highway police report that a Burgess Transit driver has been found in a gully just over the state line. He's been shot, apparently left for dead. And the truck's missing, of course. Right. The driver able to tell us anything? Not yet. He's still in a pretty bad way. Well, that sounds like the same area where those other two trucks were waylaid. What was this one carrying? Furs. Big shipment. Uh -huh. They're marked pelts, so if they turn up, that'll give us something to go on. Right, that's good. Of course, we don't know that whoever hijacked this truck drove it on into town. I think I've got a way of finding out, Mr. Bryan. Oh? Yes, after the last robberies, I asked the attendants on the Tri-State Toll Bridge to keep a check on every commercial vehicle that uses it. A truck heading this way would have to cross the bridge. Oh, uh, use my phone. All right, sir, thanks. Bryant, you have the 
License number for the truck there? No, yes. Right here. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello? This is Jim Taylor speaking. I'd like... Oh, fine, Mr. Watson. Yes, that's what I called about. Are you still keeping records for me? Good. I'm interested in a Burgess Transit truck. License number 3Y57682. The police figure the hijacking took place around 4 a.m. this morning. Okay. Sometime early today, Mr. Watson. Yo. Yeah, that's it. About 5.15, huh? Anyone get a look at the driver? Oh, oh I see. Well, Brookdale Avenue. Yes, sir, that does help. Yes, thanks a lot. Bye. Watson was on duty himself. He spotted the truck, but he didn't notice the driver. What about Brookdale Avenue? Well, Watson remembers the truck turned off that way. Brookdale only leads out onto the peninsula. Well, we could block off the area and begin a search. Can't be too many buildings large enough to hide a truck that size. Yes, I'm sure the local police will be glad to cooperate, Jim, and I'll assign Fred Thompson to give you a hand. All right, thank you, sir. The truck's still somewhere on the peninsula. We ought to be able to turn it up. Red Queen and the Black King. Like six on a seven. Oh, where are those red jacks? Bye, Mother. Hmm? It's seven o'clock. Peggy said that was the best time to come for the truck. Oh, yes. I ought to be back in an hour or so. Still be early enough for us to go to the movies. Uh, Billy. Yes? I've been sitting here thinking about you and Mike Jorgen. You never got along together, even when you were little boys. Yes, uh, that's why I'm looking forward to this job tonight. Gives me a chance to get even with him. Maybe Mike feels the same way about you. I suppose he does. Then how can you be sure this whole thing isn't some kind of a trick? Well, Peggy wouldn't try anything like that, Mom. She's, she's through with Mike. Is she? She turned you down for him once before. She'd do it again if she had the chance. Well, what's the point in bringing this up now? We can't back out. You already gave her the money. I know. Hey, get me my coat, Billy. What? I'm going with you and make sure you don't get into some kind of a mix-up. Oh, but, Mom... Now, don't argue with me. Just get me my coat like a good boy. <laughs> Who is it? Mike? Yeah. Just a minute, honey. Well, what are you two doing here? You don't mind if we come in, dear. I trust we aren't interrupting anything important. Uh, why, no, I was, I, I was just packing. I thought you told me you'd left Mike. Well, I, I did. It sounded like you were expecting him when we knocked. Well, you see, I was afraid he'd come back. You you got the furs all right? As a matter of fact, we didn't. Oh? The crates were all empty except for two on top. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I went along with Billy and saw that he checked very careful. I always like to be certain that I'm getting my money's worth when I buy something, especially the way prices are these days. Well, my, Mike must have already gotten rid of the furs. That's what we decided, too. Well, uh, I didn't know. Well, I'll be glad to give you back your 10000 Do you still have it, Peg? Well, no, not here in the apartment, but uh, but I can get it. From Mike. What are you talking about? It's probably just a coincidence, but we found $10,000 in Mike's pocket. Mike's pocket? Where is he? What's happened to Mike? He's dead, Peggy. Dead? We found him hiding in the warehouse office, and Billy... Well, you know, Billy's never liked Mike. <laughs> now, now, Peggy, you mustn't carry on so. I think you'd better spend the next few days with us. It isn't right for you to be alone at a time like this. <laughs> We 
We will return in just a moment to tonight's dramatic case from the official files of your FBI. If something should happen to you, your Social Security would be a help in providing for your family. But it would not be enough to keep them. Now, if you'd like to find out how to turn your Social Security into full security, then the experience of Mr. Benjamin Hall may be valuable. Meet Mr. Hall, a new member of the Equitable Society. When I found out that my Social Security would pay my wife only about $25 a week, I got worried with the prices what they are today. And she and the kids wouldn't be able to even make ends meet. And uh, how did you find freedom from this worry? Well, I heard you describe a fact-finding chart on this program that would help me figure out just how much extra money my family would need to keep them well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed until the youngest got through high school. That's the famous equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. It's free to all our listeners. Well, I telephoned our local Equitable Society man, and he brought the fact-finding chart along with him. He showed me how easy it was to figure out how to turn my Social Security into full security under the Equitable Family Security Plan. And at very little additional cost. So I'd like to tell any family man who has Social Security this. If you want full security for your family, call up your own local Equitable man. You'll be glad that you did. That's excellent advice. And you'll find your Equitable Society man a good man to do business with. He's a neighbor of yours, friendly, helpful, and he knows the answers. He'll help you get the most for your insurance dollar. Now, maybe your problem is owning your own home or education for your children or a comfortable living when you're over 60 or you want to turn your Social Security into full security. Call your local Equitable man and ask him first for your free copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Consult your local telephone directory for his name. You'll find it in the yellow section under Equitable. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to tonight's FBI file, Mama's Boy. In the case you are hearing tonight, your FBI was confronted by a mother and son who were both involved in crimes which led inexorably to murder. Criminal family combinations are not uncommon to the FBI. Examples like the Barker family readily come to mind. But there is no sound evidence to prove that a tendency toward crime is the result of hereditary factors. Frequently, the professional criminal has a brother raised in the same environment, faced with the same obstacles to overcome, who matures into a respected, responsible citizen of his community. All criminals have a multitude of excuses and rationalizations to explain their lawlessness and to gain your sympathies. Few of them rarely, if ever, put the blame squarely where it belongs, on themselves. Tonight's FBI file continues early the next morning in the basement of the Walters residence. Good morning, Peggy. I see you're awake. Did you have a good night's sleep? How could I tied up like this? Well, we didn't get any rest either. Mom and I stayed up till morning talking. Well, it isn't good for her. Do you know she'll be 60 on her next birthday? I couldn't care less. Well, you shouldn't feel like that, Peggy, after the way she's been worrying about you. Oh, sure. Well, she has, and she's decided that it's all right for me to let you go. What? Well, as I told her that we ought not to hold a grudge and... She agreed. Well, of course, you'll have to promise not to go to the police about Mike. Oh, I won't, Billy. I, I no, swear no, I won't. No, don't. I... Get excited, Peggy. I'll take your word for it. Well, go on. Untie me. Well, there's one other thing first. Oh? The furs. I want to know what Mike did with them. I don't know. He didn't tell me. Oh. Mm-hmm. I see. Honest, Billy. Well, I'd like to believe you, Peg, but... I'm afraid that Mom, she... She'll be awfully hard to convince. You always have to do just what Mama says. Oh, now, wait a minute, Peg. Why do you think I married Mike instead of you? A woman wants a man, Billy. Someone she can look up to. I liked you once. A lot. Oh, no, you didn't. Not really. I'll prove it to you, Billy. 
Turn me loose. I'll find out where my kid the fur is, and, and when I do, we can go away together, just the two of us, and we can... Breakfast is ready, Billy. Huh? Oh, I... Uh... I was just asking Peg about the furs. Yes, I know. And she says that Mike didn't tell her what he did with them. Now, don't worry about that now, Billy. You go on upstairs and eat your eggs before they get cold. But, Mother... I'll stay here with Peggy. Maybe she'll feel more comfortable talking to another woman. We'll just have a nice little hen party while you're eating. Yes, Mama. <laughs> Bryant speaking. It's Taylor, Mr. Bryant. Oh, yes, Jim. The police search has paid off. They found the Burgess truck in a warehouse on 11th Street. Good. Well, not too good, I'm afraid. The furs are gone except for a couple of cases. Oh? Uh-huh. And the owner of the warehouse has been murdered. Oh. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. He's a man named Mike Jorgen. Found his body in the warehouse office. Jorgen? There's quite a record, Mr. Bryant. Small-time racketeers, several arrests for burglary. Oh. Uh-huh. One of the back windows have been left open. Apparently, the killer or killers came in that way. Was there more than one? Well, we found some footprints just inside the window in a layer of dirt. Looks like they were left by a man and a woman. I'm having casts made now for the lab. Oh, Mr. Bryant, anything new on that driver? I had a call from the hospital. They think he may recover consciousness in an hour or so. Oh, fine. I'll ask the police to send a picture of Jorgen over for possible identification then. You think he hijacked the truck? Uh, so far, sir, that's my guess. Any leads on why he was killed? No, but it's just possible that somebody turned around and stole the furs from him. Of course, we can't be sure yet. Oh, I'm going to go over and have a talk with Jorgen's wife. You can stop fiddling with those stamps now, Billy, and get the furs. She knew where Mike hid them? A vacant store, 213 Greendale Street. There's a back entrance. You can park our truck in the alley. She lied to me again. What did you expect? Well, you better hurry along. All right, Mom. And, uh, Billy. Yes? I don't think you'll ever be interested in running off with Peggy again. Is she? Oh, no, no, no. She isn't dead. But I had a little trouble persuading her to tell me the truth. She, well, she isn't quite as nice looking as she was. Mama. I had to do it for your sake, son. She wouldn't be good for you. You need a mother to look after you. Taylor, I've got some news for you. Yes, Mr. Bryant? You were right about Mike Jorgen. The Burgess driver positively identified his photograph. No question but that he was the hijacker. I figured... Did you ever talk with Jorgen's wife? No, sir. She wasn't home. Oh? No. She lives in an apartment house on Elm Drive. Neighbors saw her leave last night with a young man and an elderly woman. She hasn't been back since. Oh. We got a search warrant for her apartment, turned up a rental receipt for a vacant store on Greendale Street, and Fred and I went right over. Were the furs there? No. Apparently they had been, though. The fellow who runs the cleaning business next door told us that Jorgen had unloaded a lot of crates yesterday morning. Another man had just hauled the same crates away about an hour before we arrived. Could you get a description of this other man? Well, the cleaner was pretty vague, sir. We found some footprints, so I've had casts made for comparison with the prints that we found in Jorgen's warehouse. Anything else? Yes, sir. There's a little piece of cloth on a nail near the back door of the store, as though somebody had ripped their coat and a newspaper clipping that may have fallen out at the same time. Oh? Uh-huh. There didn't seem to be any fingerprints in the clipping, just smudges, but the item itself might lead us someplace. What do you mean? Well, it's about a stamp auction to be held next week. Stamp auction? That's right, sir, and I... I... Excuse me, Mr. Bryant. Uh, oh, yes, Fred. Uh, the list of Mike Jorgen's friends and enemies that you asked the police about just come in, Jim. Oh, thanks, Fred. They gave us all the personal details they have. Take a look at that third man, Billy Walters. He has a very interesting hobby. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Bryant, what do you think? <laughs> you, Billy? Yes, Mother. Did you have any trouble? No, no, no. Found the furs all right, just what Peg told you. Put them in the shed. Oh. What's the matter? Your jacket's torn. Huh? There, the pocket. Oh. oh. I must have done it on one of the crates. Huh. Looks like part of the cloth is gone. Well, I'll just have to put on a patch. You're so careless with your things, oh, Billy. Sorry, Mother. How's Peg? Same, I guess. 
Are we going to let her go now? How can we, Billy? Well, you did promise. Believe and... me, son, if I thought we could trust her, I'd be the first one to say turn her loose. Under the circumstances, She wouldn't though. make any trouble for us. She wouldn't dare. Billy, why are you always taking her side? She isn't the sort of girl for you. I've told you that time and time again. Yes, Mom, you have. Of course, if you think more of her than you do of me, that you want to risk both our lives and let her make a fool okay, of you again. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, when do I have to take care of her? As soon as possible, I should think. But you don't have to do it yourself, Billy. I... What's the matter? Shh. I thought I heard somebody out in the back. Listen. Yeah. Be careful, Billy. Who are you? What are you doing out there? Just having a look at the furs in your shed. What? We're special agents of the FBI, Billy. I want to have a little talk with you and your mother. Emma Walters and her son Billy were turned over to state authorities and were found guilty of the murder of Mike Jorgen. Both received life terms in a state penitentiary. Mike Jorgen's wife, Peggy, was sentenced to three years in a federal reformatory for women for her part in the disposal of the goods stolen from interstate shipment. In tonight's file, you heard how a hijacking led in turn to assault, murder, another hijacking, and kidnapping. Only the swift action of your FBI prevented a second murder. FBI records show that many crimes are similarly interrelated, and because of this interrelationship, the solution of a comparatively minor offense often simultaneously solves other more serious offenses. This is one good reason why your FBI and all other law enforcement agencies are deeply concerned with every act of lawlessness, no matter how trivial it might seem on the surface. This is one reason why you, the average citizen, has a duty to report any evidence of crime that may come to your attention. To excuse or overlook an offense on the grounds that it seems unimportant may encourage the criminal to further more dangerous acts or enable him to hide more serious offenses already committed. Remember, your obligation never lies with the criminal. It always remains with your community, your state, and your country. If you are interested in the future security of your family, the answer is no farther away than your phone. Call up your local Equitable Society representative. Ask him to send you the Equitable Fact-Finding Chart for Fathers and Mothers. It's free. There's no obligation. No matter what your life insurance problem may be, independence after 60, education for your children, or assured home ownership, your Equitable representative can help you plan wisely and economically. Just consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, kidnapping. Its title, Pick Up. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Burt. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Tom Brown, Walter Catlett, Isabel Jewell, Jeanette Nolan, Paul Richards, and Carlton Young. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Pick up on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.